Hi everyone. Good morning. I am so excited to be able to talk to all of you. Can I just have a little bit of a um, reaction in the chat box so, so I know that you can hear me? Okay, hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Ghazni. Good morning. Yay. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm so excited to be able to share and interact with all of you. Hi, Kamisa. Hello. It's really nice to see all of you. So <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you, Imran. My name is Pam. All right. So can I know like um, maybe a few of you can just share. Good morning. Where are you joining us from? Where exactly are you? I happen to be in um, Gombak KL right now. <laughs> so anyone here can just tell. Okay. Hi. Hi, Tiffany. Hey. Hi. Hi, Suthi, Risa. Hi, Riska. Jakarta. Nice. Jalan Ipo. Wow. Clegg. Glen Mary, Indonesia. And Nilai. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Let's see. Anybody else? Bangi. All right. Bukit Bintang. KLCC. Really, really nice. Awesome. I Okay. So I am a clinical psychologist. I'm also a lecturer from IIUM and I'm a clinical psychologist and also a mental health coach in Naluri and I do a lot of therapy sessions. So I'm really excited to be able to share with you this topic because I think this is very close to our heart. Am I right? How many of you here wish that we had more than 24 hours in a day? <laughs> Anyone? Give me a reaction. Oh, Bangkok. Thank you so much, Mayuri. Nice. PJ, Adib. Thank you, P uh, Adib. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, of course. I feel that too. Definitely. I think weekends should be three days. What do you guys think? <laughs> so definitely. Relita, Patin. Yes, exactly. Thank you so, so much, you guys. Okay, so we're just going to wait like maybe one more minute just in case more people want to join in, right? Okay, so um, while we're waiting for them, let us try to... Um, oh, wait. Okay, so Jasmine, maybe try to check your settings and see as well. All right, just in case. Okay. Okay, so this is a very wonderful topic. It's called Get Things Done. Yay! We definitely need that. <laughs> I think it cannot be said enough as, as well. So strategies for boosting productivity. So I am now not claiming to be the perfect person who's like perfectly in perfection in productivity all the time. And that's the best part that all of us know that there are times when we have our productive moments. There are times when we don't feel so productive. So we learn from that. And let's keep this like a sharing kind of a session. Please, please, please be interactive. I love communicating with you. I can, I'm constantly looking at your chat. So you can type in any questions or comments or thoughts or feelings <laughs> as you want. And um, let me share with you a little bit about this, okay? So if any one of you is actually um, having a little bit of issue with your um, volume or any kind of audio settings, you could actually check your audio settings on the top right-hand corner. So, and please make sure that you're using a supported browser, a very good smart browser as well. Make sure that your internet connection is stable. I'm using a, a LAN cable here as well. So make sure that you're having a stable connection. Test your um, a little bit of your output from your speaker and audio settings. See if it's working. If anything happens halfway, try to refresh or you can try to exit and rejoin back and see how it works. If you do experience continuous any issues like technical issues, you can go to our chat box here. Can you see the chat box here? Okay, like you have already typed just now. So type um, Elias, so Elias Nodiri events. And then you can also like um, send a private message to that. So we have our wonderful person on standby here called Michelle. She will assist you immediately. You just have to like send a private message to her. All right. So you can feel free to ask questions in the chat box at any time. Let's say, oh, awesome, Jasmine. Thank you so much. And thank, you, thank you, Michelle, for helping out. All right. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to type in the chat box. Let's say you feel shy, shy, the cat, and you feel like, I'm really, really shy. I don't want to like everyone to see my question or my comment. It's understandable. <laughs> what you got to do is you just got to type Elias there. See Elias? And then my name, you can look for my name there. Okay, so when you see, go for, go for P, okay, you see my name there, then you click on my name and then you will be asked whether you want to send it as a private message. Then you click private message and I will try my best to remember not to say your name. 
Okay, so and awesome news also, you will have access to our handouts. In, a, in other words, our slides, right? You'll have access to that. So you will need to go to that. You'll be directed to that later. Don't worry about that. And um, so it'll be shared to you as a PDF. Yay. So good for you. All right. So I'm a lecturer and a clinical psychologist. Okay, I, I lecture in IIUM. I practice in Nalluri <laughs> and I am a certified PFA aider and also a mediator. So I love doing couples therapy too, and also individual therapy sessions. So really excited to share with you guys. So let's get right to it. I think we have a lot of wonderful number of audiences joining us today. All right, so remember, keep it coming, any of your comments or questions. So before we know how to get things done, before we know how to be um, boosting our productivity, we first need to know, what exactly is our blocker? What exactly is, um, you know, some of our challenges? Why do we procrastinate if that is the issue that you're facing? What exactly might be the causes of us doing this? Why do we need to know this first? Because when you know the blockers and the challenges and the issues that you face, then you will know how to address it. Have you ever woken up in the morning and then you feel like, oh my gosh, the time just passed so fast. Like, I bling, 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 and now it's time to go to the office. What did I do? But two hours have passed. I feel like I didn't even have breakfast. I feel like I didn't even do anything much this morning. It was so unproductive, and now I'm rushing to the office. Any one of you can totally agree. Yes, exactly, Amy. Thank you, Azuddin. Azuddin. Thank you so much, Daphne. Yes, I can high-five with you too. I have been through that before. And then you suddenly feel like, What's wrong? How come I wake up early? Still got no time to do all these things. So one of the things that you need to do right now is pause a moment. Ask yourself like, okay, let's do a postmortem right now. What did I do when I woke up at, let's say, like, what time do you guys wake up? 6 a.m.? 7? I'm not sure. But let's say if it's 7, I'm just simply putting a middle. Okay, 5, 6. Awesome. So Teresa, I love your 5 a.m. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. Azizuddin says six-ish. Rizka say five. Okay, let's say you say six. Huh? <gasps> Lalita say 14. Lalita, I really salute you, by the way, my dear. You are so amazing. And that's very, very amazing that you can wake up so early. You feel like the whole day is ahead of you, right? Okay, 5 a.m. Got to beat the traffic. You guys are amazing. Um, Rulita say three. Rulita, 3 a.m. Wow. Is it because um it's very far your office or... Or is it because you couldn't sleep? Or is it because like you really want to have a head? Okay, can't sleep well sometimes, right? All right. Thank you for sharing, by the way. You guys are awesome. Okay, so whatever time it is, let's say 6 a.m. Suddenly you blink and it's like 8 a.m. And then you're like rushing, like where did the time go? So it could be um, that there's so many things that you're trying to do before going to work. Yes, definitely, Kyria. And then sometimes you feel like, where's the time gone? So try to check yourself and see, is, is there something that is bogging you down at that time that's causing you to procrastinate? Is it our thoughts also sometimes? Is it some things that keep creeping in that you didn't expect for? What exactly could it be? Okay, Kyria says prayer, breakfast, walking, Prepare to work, shower. You have a very nice spread there, Karia. I think that's good. That sounds very productive, by the way. That sounds good because you even slot in some exercise there. What if, if, if it's us, it's two hours and all we did was wake up and get ready to work and check email. So sometimes it could be, you might feel like, I don't feel so productive. Some of you might feel like, that's okay, I'm okay with that. Or some of you might feel like, that's not how I wanted to start my day. And if that's you, Find out what could have been causing you to suddenly be sucked into that same schedule every single day. I'm going to come here. Tell me if any one of this is part of your uh, reason. So can I have the poll coming in right now? We're going to have a poll for you. Can you click on your answer, everyone? What exactly might be some of your reasons um, that you... You might feel like it's so difficult in the morning, you procrastinate, or maybe it's not in the morning, just in general, you procrastinate. What are some of the reasons you procrastinate that report that you're supposed to do? That particular email is supposed to send, that particular, you know, let's say letter or email or formal particular kind of like write up that you're supposed to do or that project you're supposed to do. What is your blocker that you normally can relate to? Is it fear of failure? Is it like demotivation? Fear of failure is very interesting, okay? Usually people who have a perfectionist um, tendency 
tend to feel oh, I cannot start yet because I'm so afraid that it's gonna it's gonna suck. So they cannot start. The motivation is like you just don't have the mood to do it because either you hate the task or you feel demotivated because of some other issues that you're facing. Like it could be relationship issues that you're facing. So you, you feel demotivated about everything in general, or you just cannot manage yourself. You wake up at six, but you just got to go out of the office at eight. And all you did was shower and get ready. And then you didn't even have breakfast yet, but somehow so many things happening. That's the time you want to iron your baju. And then so many things delay, delay, delay. Okay. Or is it habitual issues? It's just a bad habit that you keep things to the last minute. Okay. From what I can see, majority of you put like uh, demotivation. Okay. Um, very little is other reason. Okay. <laughs> so that's the other over there. Uh, majority are demotivation. Okay. It's, it's keeping on like it's, it's actually increasing right now so i i agree with you demotivation now that you've discovered there's demotivation but the second highest is also self-management skills which is awesome because that's why you are at the right place here today listening to us all right so demotivation now the next step is to identify everyone what is causing you to feel demotivated is it um too many problems too many things to do you don't know where to start or is it could it be like it's just like so much you know um too many things that people actually expecting putting on your plate yes people too much to do everything need to prioritize i usually wake up scrolling medsos was the first time to do finding perfect time perfect plan and learning now is the perfect time and never have the perfect plan <laughs> yes sometimes we plan and plan plan that we become very good planners but we don't really like do execution of it. And yes, last minute type of thing, definitely. So there's a lot of things to do and you just feel overwhelmed. How many of you, you have a to-do list that looks like this. It's like that's your to-do list. <laughs> Sometimes your to-do, okay, what do you use for your to-do list, by the way? Can I know? Can you type in the chat box while we're talking right now? Do you have like an organizer by that you buy from a very beautiful bookshop? Or do you have like... Um, use paper or do you use like maybe a very organized app that you're using excel and normal notebook comparison um let's see pretty notebook i used to use pretty notebooks everyone in fact i have one right here as we speak oh my gosh it's very pretty it's very nice organizer but you know why it's still in the plastic you know why <laughs> it's too pretty like i cannot like it's so beautiful. I don't want to like, I know what's going to happen if I do it. It's just going to become like so um, cluttered. And then I'm going to, because the to-do list keeps changing every day. Am I right? So like, um, it's too pretty. I say I'm to use exactly. And then it's too beautiful. And then too lazy to write. So you know what? My to-do list is like fresh piece of white paper like this. That's why it looks like this low. I know. I know it's not perfect, but I keep like updating it every day. So it becomes really nice. And Google Calendar block it on your calendar exactly google calendar um <laughs> pretty stuff i don't know what to do with it exactly my issue as well okay so another issue why we could be demotivated or why right exactly my sarah <laughs> totally so sometimes why is it that we are demotivated or we find it very difficult to start sometimes or we find it so difficult to boost our productivity i want to share with you this we need to also identify the root cause of ourself as a person. There are so many types of personality tests out there, which are very valid and good. And it's good that you use a valid one, not some simple pop quiz that showed up on your screen from some random site. It's good to use a legit one, right? <laughs> so it's it's there's so many different types of personality tests out there. And a very good one that, um, that you can find out there is the big five. You know, you have something called ocean so look out for those ones but i also like to look at this dimension here called the type a type b type c type d and this one is very interesting for us to discover at the office and it's really nice when i share with you about this you will understand who you are and you will also know like ha huh, i know my friend is totally this type i know my husband or wife or you know like daughter or son is totally this type so let me share with you okay because this can relate to why you might not feel productive sometimes it could actually lead to the blocker okay but before that Huyin said sometimes i will write down 
all to do or planning as decluttered from my mind. Exactly. You brain dump it. That's that's what this is, lah. Actually, you brain dump it totally. Or normal notebook, block calendar, um, when too many things. Scared to list down. <laughs> But it's, you know, the fear of not listing it down can make the fear and anxiety of it worse more, actually, because you're like, the fear of the unknown is floating up here. That's even scarier. Okay, so the type A, everyone. Let's look at this from the four basic types of personality. So we have like the type A personality is very much like ambitious, self-driven, competitive. If you give them something today, they already finished yesterday. Huh? That's a type A. They are like super duper efficient and productive and like on top of things all the time. That's the pro. The con is they can be very hard on themselves sometimes as well. So they also tend to treat other people like how they treat themselves. So you better make sure that if they give you something today, yesterday you already finished up like that, <laughs> okay? So it's like very much like expecting you to be on your toes as well. And if you're not and you're anything short of that, they can get quite edgy and quite anal or angry about that. So that can be quite um, up, uptight about that. So they're not very easy with flexibility. So if things don't go their way, all of a sudden you forget a, um, there's a typo on the letter or there's a, you forget a comma and you forget something. It can be like, ah, how can you forget this format and everything? So they can feel a bit angry about that. It's not a bad thing, by the way, everyone. All these types are good. Everything has its pros and cons. It's not bad to be A, okay? It's good, in fact. So it's um it's very efficient. It's just that the, the con can be, they can be a bit, a bit rigid. Yes, a little bit similar to the disc and all that, Anis. A little bit similar to that. So the type B, um, the pro is they are super chillax, happy-go-lucky, very, very like um, chill bro kind of a thing. Like, you know, if you give them something today and it's due tomorrow, they will probably start tomorrow, but they will get it done, okay? <laughs> if there's a meeting at 3 p.m., Chances are at 2.59, they're still walking to the meeting. And they're like, oh, yeah, I got one more minute, right? Wait, no, I'm going there. <laughs> so that's a type B. They're super, super chill. But they will get things done. It's just in a very chill at their own time and pace. And they're very flexible. So if you change things last minute, they are like super flexible to handle things. And they're like, okay, it's all right. Let's see what we can do right now. So that's the good thing about it. The The con is they can be too chill about something sometimes. So the sense of urgency may not be there when it's needed. Okay, the type C is they, are, they tend to be more of an introvert. They can be anxiety prone sometimes in the sense that they get very anxious very fast. If you're going for holiday with someone with a type C dominant, <laughs> you better make sure you have the itinerary planned and you better make sure you don't suddenly change things on the plan because they can get very stressed and anxious about stuff. And in your team, if you have someone who's an introvert or a type C, they may not really like to lead things and it's understandable, but they will do as you say and really follow things to the team. So the con is they're not so easygoing with some changes because they can get stressed very fast. And sometimes it can affect their health as well okay type dr they kind of love routines they love it they love to be the follower just tell me what to do and i'll do exactly as you say <laughs> so if you give them a project and you tell them be creative with it go crazy with it tell me you pitch to me the idea of what you want to do with it they don't like that because you've given them too much freedom so they like like you just tell them exactly what you want and they will do exactly as you are. So the con is they don't really want to take that leadership thing and role very much, but they are very good um, followers. Okay, coming to you guys right now, let's tell me, can you tell me which type can you relate most to? And you can have more than one. La. Maybe you have two, but one is the dominant one, and the second one is like the smaller one. So you have like a, okay, I'll tell you mine. Mine is like a dominant B, but a small A. So I have a big B, uh, but a small A. Oh, big B sounded wrong. Sorry. I'm, I mean, um, I'm in a dominant B and a small A, okay? So which means that uh, I kind of like flexible and chill sometimes, but I have the small A in me that becomes a bit anal sometimes. All right. So 
how to survive in a corporate setting if you're a type D? Yeah, thank you, Nadia, for that question. So if you're a type D, you, you can feel like you're suffering sometimes because um, you, you'll be given a lot of things to lead, right? So you might feel like, Alama, what am I going to do right now? I feel like there's too many things I've been given autonomy over, but I'm not the kind of person to do that. So what we need to do is we need to find ways to address the cons in our personality. So for me, um, B and A. Okay, so the B part is the chill part, but the A part helps me to balance, I think, a little bit. So that's why I like to do things early also. So it helps to balance things up a bit, but the B part still has a con. So sometimes I maybe being so easygoing, I sometimes allow people to maybe take advantage of me <laughs> sometimes. So I have to learn to say no more. So that's the assertiveness and boundary settings that I need to work on. So you need to know based on your personality, what you need to work on. It's not like we just accept it like, um, okay, I'm B, so I'll be like that. I cannot change it. No, you can uh, address the cons by trying to work on it. And that's the good news about it. It takes time, but you can slowly work on it. So somebody say here, um, I'm prone to B, but uh, dominant, but small A. Okay, so same like me, Rosha Nisa. All right, big type C, but also a bit of D. Okay, so the C and D, when you work together in that, so you need to know how to balance it up a little bit, but the D part will get the work done in a, in a routine way. So you love routines. Um, big B, small C. I might be A, B, C, D. <laughs> Thank you, Imran. That's, that's true. We might be a little bit of all, but... Either one will stand out a bit more. And which one stands out a bit more? I see a lot of like C, D, Hayati say A, C, Mayuri say A and B, right? Okay, so dominant A and small C. Okay, so if you're dominant A and small C, so you're like very, very competitive and very much um, pr productive and efficient. And the small C, sometimes you might get very stressed when things are not going your way. So it's okay. We, we use the the pro in all of our personality, that, the personality that we have, and the cons in the C, the cons in the A, we try to find a way to manage it. So everything has its pros and cons. We find a way to manage the cons, to kind of like balance it up a little bit. It doesn't mean like, oh, I'm doomed, I have this con, I have to live with it. No, you can find a way to relax a little bit. You find a way to de-stress a little bit. You find a way to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. You find a way to make peace with it. Like, okay, this is the new me. I'm comfortable with uncertainty. <laughs> so that's something very, very new, but you can slowly get there. Okay, all of you are awesome. Some of you say CNA. So you need to discover who you are. Okay, why is that important now? Because if you're a type A, yes, you're very productive. But if you're very much a perfectionist, you might find it hard and stress sometimes to start things up. And that can block your productivity because you're such like you want things to be perfect. And because of that, you might submit things a bit late and be very particular about some things. The type B will be like, okay, let's just let's set out um, an ugly draft. Okay, let's just work on it as we're going on. Okay, so I've heard bosses say this before. Let's work on fixing the engine as it's um, as you know. <laughs> As the plane is in the air, which is it's figuratively speaking, by the way, don't worry. It's actually a good way. It means like let's get it running while it's work in progress. If we want to wait till it's perfect, we may not even do it. So that's a good thing, actually. Um, you can see more in the slides. I can share with you definitely, I can share with you um some kind of readings in the end of it as well. Definitely. So it is the, the examples are like what I shared with you just now. So the type C would be more towards um people who are like very particular about stuff and the D like they can like follow routine. So usually people in man managerial position, example would be type A, but the B would be more of, they can be a manager too. They'll be more of the chillax manager, which, which everybody loves, but sometimes they might need to step up some things as well. So the type A, this is what I notice. Huh? As you think of it as a pyramid, can you guys imagine a triangle right now? A okay, a pyramid. As you go up the level of the pyramid, the top level, the CEOs, even referring to top athletes also, even referring to top people in very high positions, usually they go into this homogeneous personality. They usually, what I know this, okay, not all the time, but most of the time, uh, they are dominant A's there. And that's how they become um, in the top position as well. They're able to lead in that and 
they're very particular to get that uh, goal done. So they have that certain personality. Not to say that the B, C, and D cannot do that. No, it's not. I'm not saying that. You can, but what I notice in majority, you would notice a similar trait in them. They're very rigid in certain things as well, but that's how they got to the top as well. So there's pros and cons there. But the B can get there too because they're easygoing and they are flexible with change, which is also a strength. So even C and D, you're very hardworking and everything. So that, that kind of a thing. So recognize your type, then you will recognize your blockers um, to productivity. Okay, so let's get right to the meat, everyone. How to improve our time management skills. I'm sure that all of you have your ways that work for you. And some of you might think some things are not working for me. I want to improve that. So you're in the right place right now. Okay, so you can also feel free to type in the chat box what ways that you use that work for you too. I want to share with you this. Tell me if you heard of some of them. I'm sure you have. And tell me if some of them are new for you as well. Okay, so the first one is Parkinson's law. Okay, have any one of you heard of this technique before? Like, or this law before? Anyone has heard of it? Parkinson's law. Okay, some of you have. Okay, awesome. Some of you have not. Yeah. Okay, awesome, Jingyi, that you heard of it. Okay, Sharifah has heard of it too. So what it says is, according to the Parkinson's law, okay, is that any project will expand to the time that you give it. It will expand to the time that you give it. That means if you say, today I want to work on project, uh, let's say A, that my boss gave to me, I'll work on it today. Okay, I'll just do it today. Because you said today, you will take the whole day to do it, even though you might be able to complete it in one hour, if you really focus and sit down and do it. If you say like, um, okay, so basically it means work expands to the time that you give it. If you say, I'm going to work on this particular emails, um, I'm going to like reply to emails, something as simple as that, you know, I'm going to reply to emails uh, today, la, this morning, this morning, I just want to use to reply to emails and I'm going to like um, have breakfast while I, I do it. <laughs> I don't know. So if you do that, if you say that you're going to spend like 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Like that's the whole morning, right? You're probably going to be doing the whole, the whole morning is just email. That's not very productive, isn't it? As opposed to if you say, I am going to spend just 25 minutes of checking the first five emails. That's like super specific to the core. That's like a smart goal right there. And what it does is it, it really switches our brain to like focus mode. You go into hyper focus. And when you go into hyper focus, you're like, come on, man. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at any other emails. Don't even browse any other latest news that comes up. You're going to like hyper focus to really focus on five emails. And you only have 25 minutes. So that goes into like, when you give yourself time to do that, of course, there might be times when 25 minutes is not enough for that particular task that you give it. You can give it 30 minutes if you want. You can give it one hour if you want, but be very specific. Don't say an indefinite amount of time. Have you ever planned for a party before? How many of you plan for a party? Like you got like um, a very nice gathering and you said, I'm going to cook everything. Okay, and you said to yourself, I'm going to cook everything. Um, I'm going to make everything from scratch because I'm like so hard working today. And you say to yourself, like, I've got six dishes I want to do. And I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Like, you know, until the party starts at 6 p.m. And I'm going to do it um, the whole day today. I'm going to start. So you know what happens, everyone? Chances are at 5.50 p.m., you're still not ready. And you're still cooking something. Something's still boiling. <laughs> And you're like, you look like, oh, your hair is like all the way, all over the place. And you are sweating and you haven't bathed yet. Anyone can relate to that. So what happened was you gave your time the whole day to do it. There was no like chunking. You need to have like this micro chunking happening. Or you can say like task, um, how do you say like, you, you can have like task switching or task management, actually. So it's not just time management, it's also task management. So you can see yourself like, okay, I'm gonna make sandwiches for like one hour. <laughs> Is that too long? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna make like, tell me another dish. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna cook the pasta and make the sauce for like another hour. I'm gonna schedule, okay, nine to 10 is just for that. Then you're gonna schedule. So what happened was, 
um, a lot of times we're like, oh my gosh, I forgot we need more ice. Or, oh my God, I forgot we need more this, we need more that. And that's what happens when we give ourselves the whole day to do it. Then we, we end up going out and coming back in. I mean, it's understandable. Uh, it's not easy to plan for a party. But what happens is, that's what happens when you give yourself an indefinite amount of time. Same with office work also. I have this whole day to do this um, this thing. Okay, so chances are you're going to really procrastinate in between because there was no hyper-focused task management, chunking, planning happening. How to chunk? For example, I'm also a lecturer, right? Let's say I have a lot of marking to do today. I have 20 scripts that I want to mark today. Okay, so I... I I check students' um, therapy, lah, so they have to record the therapy and I have to check it. Each therapy is one hour for me to check, okay? So I feel tired before I start also. <laughs> so how many of you feel that way? Before you start, you feel tired already. So what I do is, let's make it fun. Maybe I'm going to put some background cafe music in the background. I'm going to trick my brain. I'm in a cafe right now. I'm going to have a bit of coffee by the side of me. And I'm going to have my earphones. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to schedule um, one hour that I'm going to take a break. So I'm going to have a hyper focus. Or maybe I only do half an hour and then I take a break. So you really have to be so mindful. I literally use a clock like that. If you can see my clock on the wall. <laughs> but... That's behind me, right? So I also use like the analog clock, you know, like square one. You need something to really watch. Be careful of using your handphone. It's very tempting to open other stuff. Okay, so um, yes, list on what you need to do for the whole day. Start, specify separate to-do list. Um, but even when you say morning, also we need to do the like hourly planning. Yes, plan for 15 minutes. Later, boss come and disturb. <laughs> Yes, that's very normal, Sophia. It's okay. It's okay for that to happen. Sometimes your colleagues can also interrupt you, right? If you're working from home, then it's your family can also interrupt you. Oh my gosh, you heard here a knock on the door. Open the door. I need to take something from the room. Oh my goodness, that's very true as well. But it's okay. You do all that, you go back into your hyper-focus. If you're working from home, I recommend having a notice on the board, focus session in progress, come back after 15 come back at 10 20 for example something like that <laughs> okay so if it's your boss please answer your boss first that's very much a priority if it's your colleague maybe you can say can i get back to you i'm really doing something very urgent right now <laughs> okay so the disease yes the law no oh sorry <laughs> yes rashanji definitely yeah i know that's what i thought before as well i thought those were referring to the disease as well um you can definitely use this method to hit the gym yes because if okay that's a very good example also like uh, today evening, I'll go to the gym. Very common, right? But what? What time? Like how long? That's why you need to smartify it. It's called smart goal. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. So what time exactly? 5 p.m. 5 to what time? 5 to 5.30. What machine are you going to use when you go there? <laughs> okay, I'm going to use the elliptical machine and then the cycle. Then I'm going to go for weights. For example, you have to be like super specific. Enough or not half an hour to do all that? Yes, because I will do like, um, you know, 10, 10, 10, for example. Okay, so when you do that, you'll be super specific. But remember, you got to put this beautiful device away. All right, and you become like super duper specific when you do that. Okay, do you think it's possible? Atomic Habits by... James Clear. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I love, this is what I love about you guys. Please keep sharing what you can, what you know, because this is like a sharing session for us. We, we learn from each other, right? Um, I started to write down what came out of my mind when I'm working so that I can be focused. Oh my gosh. When I was doing my PhD, I had to have a blank piece of paper beside me all the time. Actually, as I'm talking to you right now, I have it beside me too, because I have ideas coming in sometimes. So... <laughs> It's nice. And when you have a blank piece of paper, it's to quiet that mind. You deposit it. Oops, incoming, deposit it. So that's a very good way. Atomic Habits is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Which brings me to the second technique, which is called calendar blocking, which means like if you really want to, okay, let's say today at the office right now, right? Some of you at the office right now. Um, what time is it for you? Okay, whichever time it is for you, can you think of your time at the office in blocks of hours? That means one hour block, one hour block, one hour. So for me, it's 11.35, okay? So like, what am I going to do from now to 
end of it. So let's say when our webinar ends, it will be 12 p.m. Malaysian time. So um, what am I going to do from 12 to 1? Block it in your calendar, like here in your Google calendar in, or in your phone calendar. Why do we do that? Because you're going to get a reminder and it just pushes you a little bit. Don't you think so? It kind of like pushes us a little bit. I, I find that very helpful. Okay, so in the calendar here, um, look at your calendar. I, I bet there's a lot, Lao. I know you have a lot of work stuff as well, but literally block it according to hours. If you want to use Excel, it's also great. Honestly, it's great too. Um, it works well. Yeah, exactly, right, Azizuddin? Practicing the calendar blocking works a lot. Put it in your calendar. Even something as small as putting your laundry, put it in the calendar. That's for after 5 p.m., right? I'm guessing, okay? And then even if you want to watch like a nice movie on, I don't know, Netflix or something, um, HBO, anything at all, put it on the calendar. Because otherwise, most of the time, our personal goals just goes um, flying out the window. Let's face it, okay? You're going to put your personal goals on the back burner. Am I right? Think of your mind as a car. The front seat always turns out to be every other el everybody else's calendar comes in your front seat. Like, Pam, I need you to do this. Pam, I need you to do that. Um, Hayati, I need you to do this. Huyin, I need you to do this and everything. So everything else comes to the front seat. Am I right? In the passenger seat, in the front. And then your stuff goes in the back seat. I will go to the gym today only if I finish blah, 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 blah. That's the back seat, long. Uh, I have no time to go to the gym today. You know what? Your gym, your particular exercise routine just flew out the car. It's probably in the booth or it's, it's chasing after the car. So your gym, your exercise routine is like, wait, let me catch up with you. I'm trying to get into the car. So it's been so many times that you postpone that it's not even in the car anymore. Let me ask you a question. Who's driving your car? Is it you? If the car is your mind, who's behind the um, the steering wheel? So a lot of times it's someone else's calendar, <laughs> right? So it's good to put laundry in the calendar. It's nice. It's nice to put Netflix on the calendar. Trust me. If you're honoring yourself as well, you know, it's good to put dinner on the calendar. <laughs> Not me if you have no dinner time. Dinner time is any time you finish your work, that's dinner time. So 12 p.m., 11 p.m., 10 p.m., anyone here? I use Notebook Weekly Planner for calendar blocking because I feel like digital one is easy to dismiss. Correct. Actually, you're right. I started to have like, um, even I use PowerPoint sometimes, you know, so I can like calendar block it and move things around. Okay, number three. What if we don't follow the block calendar? Yes, Ginny, very good question. That's why I'm so scared to use this one. That's why I'm so concerned to use um, my calendar in my, sometimes also, because if you don't follow, you know, if you don't follow, you know what happens? People might say, don't follow my, don't follow my, so what? But actually, you kind of feel demotivated. You feel sad. You feel like a failure and you feel angry sometimes and you feel like you just cluttered your calendar <laughs> with stuff that you now have to rearrange and you feel counterproductive. Yeah, it's true. So what we need to remember is when you're doing calendar blocking, go easy in yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be compassionate to yourself. Remind yourself that it's okay if things don't go perfectly as planned in the calendar. But this is my tentative because we all know that sometimes unexpected things can happen. I just got to know that I mean, this is a close story uh, from me, my personal story. So I just got to know my friend was hospitalized because of, um, of a stroke. And I was so, like, sad about that. And then I was calling her and everything. That was not on my calendar, right? Scheduling time to make time for that, praying for her, calling her, talking to her, and then feeling sad about it. That was not on my calendar. But it's okay. Make room for unexpected things. Make some room for wiggle time. Make room for your emotions as well. It's okay. But then move things around. It's okay. So have three checkpoints, I think. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening, whereby you check your calendar, like, how are things going so far? Do I need to move things around? Did something unexpected happen? I have to kind of, like, move it around? You can do that. So something like that, right? Uh, Okay, so calendar blocking. Sorry, sorry, Rashanjit. I'm so sorry. Okay, so let's look at your calendar right now. Can you guys, um, if you have a phone uh, with you right now, can you look at your calendar in your phone and then go to like um, July 11th and then open that 
and press the plus sign, it just means putting um, an event to every hour in your calendar. What I meant was assigning an event for every hour. So it's like how you assign meeting events, same like that, you do it, but not for meeting, but for your particular to-do list. So you're kind of like assigning a, an event or in other words, a task to every hour in your calendar. So you can just do that with a physical paper one, a digital one, a phone one, anything like that. Oh, oh no, no, <laughs> sorry, it's not preventing something. I'm so sorry, but you're right to think that way. You're, you're not wrong at all. <laughs> I, I should use another word. I should say calendar, um, calendar slotting, calendar booking, right? That sounds better, <laughs> calendar booking. Thank you, Rashanji, that's a good one. Okay, recognize tasks that boost your psychic bandwidth. I gotta tell you something. This is a very important and interesting um, concept okay what is psychic bandwidth okay so um wait let me see something something interesting just pop 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 crazy says do you think that it's good to merge work related tasks in calendar with house chores ideally it's good to separate it of course but when you separate it sometimes you miss certain things in both calendars so if you can kind of like put it on one calendar but maybe have a different color for it would that help um preventing from others to disturb your plan of priority Yes, exactly. You're right, as is it. So maybe have like a same calendar but different color. I think that would that would help because everything, even your personal house chore, is a priority for you as well. So kind of like having that set boundaries. Totally, totally. Yes. Okay. What is psychic bandwidth? Have you guys? Do you guys remember during the pandemic that when you had to work from home? I don't know if you faced this, but I did. It was like um. You have to share bandwidth at home, right? So my Wi-Fi bandwidth was like very slow. Very, very, very slow. I'm so shy to tell you how much was the <laughs> bandwidth, but it was super slow, lah, okay? And I was sharing it with my parents and my sister, and we're all like working from home. And we're all using it for different purposes. So my mom might be on YouTube checking out some recipes, and then my dad might be like reading the news. My sister's like working on very, very important Zoom meetings and calls and uploading documents. And so was I. I was like on Teams and you know, all kinds of things. I was also doing webinars with thousand people joining in. I was doing all kinds of like different things as well. So it was super slow. That's Wi-Fi bandwidth. When many people are using similar bandwidth and it's crowded, it gets super slow and less productive, right? Same like that. For your psychic bandwidth, my dears, you have this too, okay? And what it means is it's here. When you have too many things clouding your mind and absorbing your energy, that is actually affecting your psychic bandwidth. That is why you feel like, I cannot think, I need to lie down. Oh my God, too many things happening, I cannot be productive. I have to run away from people. I have to do this, I have to, I, you feel like, that's what you call psychic entropy. It's too many things clouding your mind. And you know what that does to you? You cannot think of ideas outside the box. You cannot think creatively. Things that were so easy to solve become super duper hard for you. And then you tend to ask people, can you think, uh, I cannot think already of any more ideas. Can you just think for me what to do? Have you ever done that before? That is when your psychic bandwidth is too full and you have a headache and you cannot be creative anymore. Have you ever had an encounter where, oh my gosh, I'm so creative today. I've got lots of great ideas. And, and you're like, pitching these ideas and your friends are like, huh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> because your psychic bandwidth was like available and, and like functioning to perfection at that moment. So over here, um, okay, like I like what Belinda says, isn't this too robotic? Every step we take seems pre-programmed. You're right, Belinda, it's true. That's why it's good to have some wiggle room. Maybe you could have some parts of it where it's like more like um, maybe two to four is like, you know, freestyle, whatever that stuff that you want to do can come in there. But I think it's if we have too much of free kind of like moments, that's when we sometimes our productivity is not as productive because that's when the Parkinson's law thing comes in. We allow circumstance, circumstances to di dictate how we plan our day. So if we don't have a, a heads up on it, then we let circumstances kind of like take over and that's when productivity can go down. So try it and see, try for half a day and see how you feel. Does it feel robotic or does it feel productive? It's interesting, you know, but of course leave room for wiggle room so it doesn't get too robotic. 
if unplanned meetings take place in between, which is so true, I totally agree with you, that happens too. When that happens, allow that to happen. That's why you, you're going to be flexible over here. Your mind has to be strong to know that this is just a draft. This is just a tentative. It can change. Um, this is just helping us organize things, but if the unplanned thing happened, we should make room. Exactly. Correct. We should not be robotic. Yeah, correct. It's very important to not be rigid. Very, very important. Just make room for, un remember, tell yourself when you're making this calendar um, setting thing, like, I'm going to make room for un uh, unplanned things. I'm going to be comfortable with uncom uh, with um, any kind of uncomfortable thing that happens. I'm going to be comfortable with any uncertainty that happens. All right. So psychic bandwidth pretty much is your brain and your mind's ability to be able to have this bandwidth, to be creative. Your ability, try to check out this um, very nice TED talk, actually, by David Allen. And also you can, you can read his article on this as well. So he says that psychic bandwidth is everybody's mind's ability to function to perfection and to at a different level of productivity to be your best self. So you need psychic bandwidth. In other words, you need be you need to be able to have time to think, time to be crazy, like time to just make a mess. So what it means is, like what Belinda said just now, exactly. That's actually what it means as well. You need to have wiggle room. So that means it's not too pre-planned right up to you sleep. Um, you need to have like, okay, I'm going to stop the calendar from maybe 7 p.m. onwards. Then it's going to be free for me to think of what I want to do. And have at least one hour a day where you energize this psychic bandwidth and we call it time to think, time to be crazy, time to do whatever, time to just do random stuff that you want to do. Even if it means just chilling on your bed and scrolling, you know, and even if it means just checking out whatever favorite songs that you have, anything at all, that time is just for you to do whatever, asterisk it, asterisk that time. It's like time for you to energize and re-motivate yourself and kind of like re-energize yourself. Okay, you guys know Aerosmith, right? Aerosmith, don't want to miss thing. Okay, so he says that he has one hour a day. I don't know if he still practices this, by the way, but he's, I mean, in his previous interview, he says that he has one hour a day that he goes down to his studio and he calls it the dare to suck hour, like dare to suck. He, he literally calls it um, my dare to suck hour, where he just jams with whatever kind of jams he wants, like whatever kind of instruments and any kind of like tunes that he wants to experiment with and any kind of thing that he wants to like compose, he will just allow himself the space to do that for that whole hour. And he says, I, I dare myself to suck. It's okay. I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm just giving myself that space to be crazy and just go crazy with whatever ideas. So if you can have one hour a day to do whatever stuff that you love, as crazy as it sounds, as mundane as it sounds, it's also fine. But you need that hour, which is just you, your me time, in other words. If you can do that every day, you is energized and strengthen your psychic bandwidth. You come back to the office extra energized, you know, because you gave yourself that personal space to be you, actually. And you come back stronger and more energized as opposed to what people are doing nowadays where they are constantly with someone, with people. They're constantly surrounded by people and they don't have any me time and they don't have time to do anything that they like to do. So what Belinda said is very true. You need to have that wiggle room and time. What do you guys think so far? Do you have that time? Can you type in the chat box? Do you actually have that wiggle room, you guys? How much time do you spend a day for yourself? Just you. Because this really can affect your productivity. See, a lot of us don't, right? Okay, time to start making some room in your busy schedule for that. Even if you can't do an hour, try 15 minutes of just chilling and doing what you like. It can be as simple as taking a walk downstairs with your earphones, without your phone. Wait, our earphones will be connected to the phone now. Okay, so but maybe just like, yes, reading books. Exactly. Stuff that you don't normally do. And then you're giving room for that now. Like stuff that is like, you, you buried that interest for a long time. Now you're you're kind of like and living it and making it alive again. I, at night after kids sleep. Yeah, exactly. So it can be as simple as, yeah, Shopee scrolling. Yes, it can. It, it counts. Um, TikTok scrolling, anything like that. Journaling, 
anything like that, but it must be not mindless scrolling. If possible, something something that makes you feel happy, that it gives you joy to scroll about that content. So not yes, if you do it mindlessly, it will be time consuming, regret and guilt. If you do it mindlessly, how to do it mindfully? Scroll mindfully means, right? Okay, I really like watching all these cute cat videos on TikTok. I'm going to like literally search for that for like 10 minutes, let's say. <laughs> or I like learning new recipes. I'm going to literally scroll for that on YouTube and I'm going to watch some shorts on that um, for about half an hour and literally keep an alarm there. So when you do that, you're giving yourself space and time to search for your own interests. Um, following a schedule is naturally inside us. Yes, you're right, Badrul. We are creatures of habit. You're right. We are creatures of habit. That's why we need some routine, actually. So sometimes not having a routine can become a routine as well. And that's how productivity can go down. So it becomes a routine to me not to have anything specific to do or a routine. So that can become a habit. We're creatures of habit. So it's very important for us to do that. Uh, me time in shower. Oh my gosh. I love that, Belinda. You know what? I feel so shy to say, but I'm going to say sometimes I like to play. Um, oops. All right. Okay. <laughs> I like to play Kenny G um, in the shower because it's just like so calming. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I want to share with you this very interesting and important part. It's called the Eisenhower matrix. Okay. I don't know if you heard of this one. Look at this quadrants over here. We have four main quadrants here. The first one is urgent and important. Can you see that? This is the quadrant that we usually need to deal with immediately. Am I right? This is the quadrant that we really, really have to get things done when. Like maybe like you have something, a report to submit. You have something very urgent to do. You really have to submit that, right? So that's urgent and important. But the second quadrant is not urgent, but it's important. It's everything that you guys have been typing in the chat box, journaling, walking, um, shoppy, and then going on, like, you know, walking walk, in a walk, shower time is your me time. That's not urgent, but it's important. It's very important for you to do. The third quadrant is it's urgent, but it's not important, but it's very, very urgent. But it may not be important for you to do. Maybe you can empower someone else to do that. Maybe you can delegate that task, or you can kind of like find someone else to actually do that if you if it's possible. So that is delegation. The fourth quadrant is not urgent. It's not important, but um, it's something that is going to be over there that you might need to rethink. Do you need to actually have it on your to do list or not? For example. Mindless scrolling, <laughs> yes, and maybe something that you know people are trying to put on your plate, but it's nothing to do with your division or your company, and you can say no to them. And that's not urgent, that's not important. You can say no to that. So find a way to have boundary. Do you know which of these quadrants is the most important for you to actually uh, be productive? Can you tell me? Can you guys tell me, like, which one? One, two, three, or four? Which quadrant is the most? Two, you are right. Rain is right. It's two. One also important, of course. Of course, one is important. But the one to really boost your morale and your productivity is two. One, of course, we have to do. But the one to really boost your morale and productivity is two. You know why? Because this one is not urgent, but it's very important for your personal growth for your morale and your motivation. Because remember, it comes down to the thing just now that your one of your reasons for procrastinating is demotivation. Am I right? So it comes down to that for that. So number two is what? So tell me, you guys, can you type in the chat box? What are some of the two not urgent but important things that you need to start incorporating today? Like exercising, for example, eating healthy. It's not like it's not like somebody gave you a deadline, but it's important. It's important to you, right? Making room, time for your kids and everything. Um, what, what do you think you can do in your life right now for that? right can you guys get more sleep exactly right okay i'm gonna go to number five right now all right cut sugar yes exactly number five is being in the zone this kind of relates to the psychic bandwidth by the way it all comes hand in hand the urgent are not important the important are not urgent <laughs> interesting way right to look at it so overcoming procrastination exactly that's very <laughs> that's very not urgent, but important. Good one, Welping. 
Okay, being in the zone. What's being in the zone? Have you ever seen athletes before they take off on a, you know, when, on a hundred meter run, for example? It means like you're like so focused. I teach sports psychology, and being in the zone is when you have hyper focus over there. You put your stuff aside. You're not gonna check your phone. You're not gonna check your emails. You're gonna totally focus on a task. If it's if it's scary and daunting to you to not check your phone every five minutes know that it's more daunting that your attention span is shifted every five minutes. And that is, you're, you're actually, do you know that all of us are training our brains to have a shorter and shorter attention span? <laughs> every time we we cannot stand to watch a video longer than one minute, right? We actually like <laughs> have accidentally program our brain to only span for like one minute. So it is, but it depends on the video. Lot. Sometimes we can focus when it's a very nice video. But I want you guys to try something. If you can try a 15-minute focus without checking anything else, it's really being in a very hyper heightened zone and you're like so focused and you really get things done. Even if you're doing laundry, focus on that and really enjoy it. If you're cooking, focus on that. If you're doing a report, focus on that. You become so focused when you're exercising, focus on that. It becomes super productive and happy and happening and you go into the state of flow I, in positive psychology, we call it flow, a flow state. This is when you're so enjoying it. Your body will produce dopamine during a time like that. Have you ever seen people when they love exercising, they can't stop? They're addicted to it. It's a good addiction. That's endorphin and endopamine being released when you're in the zone and you're so super, super focused. Okay, we have this rule called triple eight rule. And the triple eight rule is also another kind of a technique. Check your life right now. Yeah, the power of now. Exactly, Kyria. Good. The triple eight rule says that we all need time to sleep. <laughs> we need time to eat. And we need time to play. Let's look at it in a very simple way right now. Like sleep. Um, okay, we have time to sleep. Sorry, did I say eat? I meant work. Oh my God, I must be hungry. <laughs> sleep, work, and play. Okay, so we have 24 hours in a day. Can you think of how many hours do you spend for sleep, work, and play? Ideally, roughly. Just think of your own self right now. Like, um, how many hours do you allocate for that? Because we don't realize it, you know, actually, this 24 hours, some people work for 16 hours and they don't realize it. Some people work for 12 and they don't realize it. So when you pinch a lot of that from, maybe your work is pinching from the sleep. Maybe it's pinching from the play. It brings me to a poll right now. Let's let's look at a poll right now. If we can have a poll here to see which part is really suffering in all of you. Can we can we bring out a poll for, for a bit here? Let's see um, which part is suffering for you. Work, play, or sleep, or none of the above. You're, you've got it all together, um, balanced. Which one? Which one is suffering? That means lacking. Like you overwork, but you underplay or you oversleep and you underwork, <coughs> which one is yours? Remember, we said lacking, huh? lacking. That means you are lacking in, a lot of you say sleep. Okay, I see a lot of people say sleep and play. Yeah, so the top is sleep and play. A lot of you say that you choose sleep and play. Not enough sleep, not enough. Okay, what I mean by play is everything else. Huh? Like your laundry, your eating, your um, watching TV, everything comes on the play. So other things other than work and sleep. So everything else comes to the So play and sleep is almost, it's pretty much the same. Not enough time to work, to play and sleep. So let's see when you are able to, to see how many hours you allocate for this, right? You overwork. <laughs> Commuting to work is considered work or play. Interesting question. I think commuting would be work. <laughs> that is part of work. Okay, entertainment is play. Yes, correct. So you sleep ten hours, you work twelve hours, play. See some. So ask yourself: Are you okay with that? With that? Um, with that spread? Or do you feel like it's not balanced? I want to change some things. So when you recognize that, see how you can try to change it. Which brings me to this technique called the Pomodoro technique. Okay, the Pomodoro technique. I think you heard of it before. Um, thank you so much for sharing with me this private chat here. You're sleep deprived, working hours are all over, and it's really difficult to delegate, but um, it's still an issue. And it's really difficult because you miss important meetings. I'm so sorry for that. Yeah, it's definitely not easy at all for that. 
and it's something that you need to prioritize yourself as well you can barely get four hours of sleep every day so do you know like lack of sleep can really lead to us having um yeah of course we know lack of productivity but it can also cause health problems so figure out what might be causing that and how can you maneuver things to shift things up a little bit to make your sleep priority as well a little bit more Okay, so Pomodoro technique basically means that you're going to schedule, okay, like that Pomodoro is tomato, right, in Spanish. So you're going to schedule, you don't have to actually buy that um, timer, but you can. I saw it, it, it exists. So you schedule 25 minutes of focus time, okay, and then you have five minutes of a break. So 25 minutes of very, very good focus time, and then you have five minutes of a break. And this comes back to a little bit of what we we're talking about just now as well, focusing. So you during that 25 minutes, you put your phone away. If 25 minutes is too scary for you to be away from your phone, then try 15 minutes. But the very important thing is for you to really, really schedule that focus time for you. When you do that using your phone, there, if you go on YouTube, there are people who actually do that together with you also. <laughs> and you can choose, okay, I want to choose um, four Pomodoros, one hour of a focus time. So there's like four Pomodoros there, right? I'm sorry, two Pomodoros, 25, 25. So you can do that with someone as well on YouTube or somewhere. How do we achieve good quality sleep? That's a very good question. Okay, so good quality sleep is something that you, you need to check to, and see if like, um, is there something actually clouding your thoughts and your mind? And is there something actually affecting your sleep that you tend to overthink? Identifying the cause of the lack of a good sleep is very important in order for you to ensure a good sleep. Okay, which brings me to this final one over here called energy management. And by the way, keep keep your comments coming. Yeah, I'll come to that in a little bit. All right, so energy management is important. It's also related to your questions right now. After intensive work and stress, um, when work week and weekends also, um, it will have a kind of revenge feeling. That's called revenge procrastination. I will not want to do anything at all. I will just want to have all my time as random, not doing anything as planned. Is there a way to handle it? That's very true. I think I have felt that before too, because you feel like you were robbed throughout the whole week and now it's my time. Get away everything, <laughs> that kind of a thing. And that's okay for you to do that. I think you can. you deserve to give yourself some space to do that. If you feel like um, one day, I want to, do you know they call it like um, um, Dolce Farniente? I don't know. I learned it from that movie, Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> so the sweetness of doing nothing. Or in America, I think they call it a duvet day where you just want to like have this day. It's just like duvet, you know, duvet cover. This is just like me just wanting to enjoy myself under the covers, doing whatever. So they actually have a duvet day as well. So you, you deserve to take um, a time off and do that in the weekend. Maybe don't spend the whole weekend doing that as well. Spend one day giving yourself a duvet day and the next day kind of like prepping for what you want to do. Because if you have the whole weekend being um, random and not doing anything, also you can start to feel the Monday blues and Sunday guilt kind of a thing. So maybe schedule that. One full day is complete random. And the next day is kind of like maybe what you want to... Just schedule fun stuff, schedule fun things that you want to do as well that can help a lot because then you give room for your mind and emotional and emotional kind of like uh, well-being. And that is food for your mind and emotions. Just like you need physical food, you need food for your mind and your emotions and you need food for spiritual food as well, which means that, um, you know, prayer or meditation, mindfulness, in any way that you find wonderful to connect to a higher source and power because that really helps you to connect at a soul level and that's really wonderful for you to do so you need to schedule time for that so what i would do personally is i, I have time to pray as well and that that's something that makes me feel grounded and i feel happy that i have time to do that so that is very important for all of you thank you so much Rashanjit, for sharing that oh thank you so much that's so helpful which really brings me to digital detox. You guys need to, to know this. You need to have time to detox from your laptop. How many of you are guilty of never shutting down your laptop? Come on. I need to see all the hands up over here. You have like an invisible, you know, avatar. You have an invisible plaid that is connected to your laptop. <laughs> and you, you and your laptop are one. What do they call the plaid? Um, what do they call the animal in, in avatar? I forgot. Like 
there's a name for his dragon, right? And then you like connect it to your laptop the whole time. So that's the same as what happens. If you don't shut down and it keeps you keep putting it to sleep, right? Not only are you making your laptop productive, the level go down <laughs> your laptop is not sleeping by the way it's hibernating and you are also not shutting down because when your laptop does not shut down it's difficult for you to shut down too you are your laptop are one and you need to detox from it by the way and i just had a wonderful weekend um you know going to my cousin's house without my laptop and it felt so wonderful really it's so freeing uh and you can be also detoxing from your phone as well if you go for a walk don't bring your phone. I know you need your playlist. Okay, just use just use it for that only. You know, flight mode if you have to. Okay, awesome. Okay. So look at the big picture in your life, everyone. Know and recognize what your blockers are. Try to do a postmortem of your whole day and see where exactly is time just running away. Where do you lose time? And find pockets of time. Pockets of time to find ways to include things that you can do so that you make time for everything that's important for you. Okay, so these are the summary of all the techniques that we learned just now, all right? And I wanna share with you about Naliri as well. Just to remind all of you, if you're not on the app, please make sure that you try to register with us. You can find out from your HR if you are a partner with us, or you can email um, hello at Nalari.live, or you can check out our website, just type Nalari Community also, and. Um, Naluri uh, as well. You can also um, send a private message to our Naluri events over here. <laughs> she will also guide you for that. All right. So we actually act as a, a coach to you. We help you have a holistic wellness and well-being kind of a program that we are actually guiding you step by step. We have lots of coaches actually on board. We have like a health, we have a fitness coach, we have a dietitian, a psychologist, a mental health coach, mental health coach, and we have like a, a doctor and a dietitian and everything, even an executive coach. Okay. So it's really amazing if you can. Uh, I'm a psychologist, I'm a mental health coach. Yes. I used to do like coaching on the app. Right now I've transitioned to more one to one consultations, but you can book remote therapy with me, Analiri. Uh, you can book also to be under any of our mental health coaches as well. And anyone who you prefer. There's so many. There's so many like a whole wide range as well. I'm open to clients, yes, for remote therapy sessions. You can definitely book with us. I'm gonna show you that in a bit in a little bit. Find out your intrinsic motivation. That's what we try to do. We try to help dig deeper. Why do you want to be healthy? We go deeper at a deeper level. We're not like um, how some people might want to help you lose weight. Okay, we're only going to focus on that. No, we go deeper into how and why and the why factor and how to make it sustainable. Because a lot of get fit quick uh, approaches may not be sustainable, right? So we want to make it more sustainable. And we do it through the SMART goal. This is what I was talking to you about just now. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Right, this is very important. So making smart goals, that's what's our job. We help you to do that as well. So we will help you, um, as you as you talk to your coaches on the app. And setting motivations and goals are very, very important. So if, if there are some questions here that were unanswered, you can also talk to your coach about it on the app. You will see that you'll be automatically assigned to a coach. And for remote therapy, you can actually choose from our range of remote therapies. I'm one of them as well. So for the support and resources here, um, I'll give you like maybe a few seconds to scan this. Would you like to do that together? You can whip out your phones. You can scan this. And you don't have to worry. We're also going to give you the handouts actually after this. So you can also scan it there. Let me show you. So this is for you to scan to see your level of um, symptoms that you're going through. It does not mean that you're diagnosed now if you scan it and do it. It just means like it's just a screening to see how you've been for the past one week with regards to stress level, anxiety, and low mood. Okay, you got that part. And this is where you can book a one-to-one -one consultation. So you can actually scan this and then you can choose which therapist you would like to book a session with. So I am open to clients as well. You can book, or you want a mail, maybe you can book with a mail as well. You can book with any particular range of um, particular. So you can scan it like this, then open it. Then you can choose your therapist over there. And then you have also, I think a lot of you are on the app 
or on the web, please remember if you are not yet with us on the app, please make sure to check if your company is registered with us as well because you can ask HR uh, about that or you can ask Naluri straight as well because then you would get a different um, package, right, with us. So we also have Naluri on the web. I love typing on the web as well, so it's really nice. So you can scan this QR code too, I'll give you a few seconds to scan. And don't worry, we will give you the handouts too, and it will be available. By the way, all our, okay, you can download the handouts, you guys, everyone. You can download it and you can take a time to scan. Okay, so don't forget to give us your feedback, okay? You will see it appearing on the screen. Please, please give us your feedback. We'd love to hear how you felt about this talk. And if you like more stuff like this, we would love to give you more. If you go to our website, you type in Google, you will come to lots of resources over there. Go to resources and go to videos. You can see all these webinars over there. Okay, so I am now going to come to the Q&A session for all of you. If there are any unanswered questions just now. Okay, so let me see. Um, okay, summary page. Sorry, sorry, Belinda. This is the summary page I think you were asking about here. I think this one, right? This is a summary page. Um, do outdoor physical exercise in early morning on every weekend. Okay, that's nice. I'm oh, sorry. Right. I need to answer live. Okay, let me answer this live for you. Um, that is the way you will be productive to yourself aside from having enough sleep. Okay, that's really nice. Thank you for sharing that. Let's go to the questions part as well right now. Um, any other questions that we have for us? Let's have a look and see if I miss anything in case. Let's see. Um, okay. Somebody here watch horror movie, Nur Hayati, <laughs> for the adrenaline rush, right? <laughs> adrenaline, okay. Um, I'm going to come back to this question here, but um, that's, that was actually posted here. Let me see. Okay, yes, that question. I think sleep is important, but how do we achieve good quality sleep? Very, very important question. Thank you, Jasmine, for that question. So how do we achieve good quality sleep? The first thing that we need to know is to be able to have a cutoff time. And what is the exact time that you really want to be able to roughly go to bed at? So you might say like, okay, I choose, can you guys tell me what time would you like to go to bed at? So let's say, for example, if I choose like, um, 10 o'clock. So if I choose 10, then I I need to know that I need to be able to schedule like, okay, by 9 something p.m., I need to be able to already start to prepare myself and have sleep hygiene. So sleep hygiene is really changing into the sleep clothes, maybe being able to really have like um, something like a warm drink before you go to bed and then make sure you go to the washroom before that as well and have a sleep routine that you do a night routine. Maybe your night routine is prayer and then you read a book and then you sleep off. Try not to have a night routine whereby you scroll on TikTok and YouTube and then you doze off or Netflix and you doze off because when you have you are exposed to that kind of like very bright light and that will keep you awake so your night routine ideally would be something that will help you to slowly shut down i use a diffuser by the way a diffuser with a very nice light and that helps a lot so have that that will be very important to improve sleep quality make sure your room is like cold enough and everything and make sure that you don't overthink if you have incoming thoughts have a little bit of a notebook there and write down deposit it there tell yourself i'm gonna deal with it tomorrow Okay, so I think we need more feedback from you guys. So you can click on the feedback over there. Okay. Um, okay, I think we're going to close in a, just like a, maybe one minute time, I guess. Let's see. We have another one. Um, okay, here. Tracy says, do you think it's good to merge work-related tasks in calendar? Okay, I think we answered that one as well just now. I said to put like a different color. We have another one here. How to increase psychic bandwidth very important question imran thank you so much for that question so one way is every day make sure you schedule at least half an hour if you can if one hour is too long at least half an hour where you have me time just for yourself where you do stuff for you things that give you joy it can be as simple as a cup of coffee and just listening to a very nice cafe music on youtube or as simple as just maybe you reading stuff that gives you joy for personal growth maybe you like to read on 
like how to improve something in your life. So read up on that, read up on that topic, how to have better, even how to have better time management skills, a self-help book also, something that is for you. And then you feel like you are improving and you're doing personal growth. What do you like to do? Do you like to do gardening and stuff like that? Stuff like that, that really enhances your productivity level because you are doing something that has got to do with your interests, your hobbies. Okay, so... I think we might need to have um, a bit, we, don't, we might need to close the session because I think some of you might need to go out for lunch or might be hungry. Okay, so I'm not sure if there's any last question here, but uh, thank you so much, um, Michelle, for sharing. Oh, by the way, can I please share with you? Can you please go on Mallory Community website and please go on resources and articles. Those articles are so informative and they are written by Michelle herself. And they are so wonderful. She's a wonderful psychology graduate as well and a marketing executive, and she's awesome. So please check that out. Um, would I consider lunch as work or play? Ah, oh, interesting. Lunch is play for me because that's when I really unwind and I eat what I like. <laughs> so, but if you're gonna rush back, then you don't really enjoy the food. True. So maybe you need to allocate a bit more time for that particular moment. See if you can steal somewhere, pocket of time, include more for that. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for this um. Wonder. You guys are awesome, by the way. You've been constantly uh, engaging, and I love that about you. Thank you so, so much. So please check out the handouts, scan the QR codes, lots of codes there. Please give us the feedback. All right. Thank you so, so much. I wish you all the best. Have a great Friday and weekend. And thank you so, so much. All the best to you. Hope you have a great productive week and year ahead. Thank you so much. Take care. Hope to see you all. Thank you so much. Yes.